Hi, I'm Brian, Service Manager at Whole Latte Love. This week on Cribs, we're going through the Profitech Pro 500 PID. Let's take a look inside, huh? Come on in. And we're gonna get a little into this little cutaway thing over here to show how the heat exchanger works in a minute. Yep, definitely. Okay. Love these things. All right, so we're gonna start with some of the basic things here. I think everyone knows what the reservoir is. Uh, reservoir, you got your reservoir sensor, magnetic float right in there. Mm -hmm. And the valve at the bottom, little sprung bearing at the bottom of that. Mm -hmm. Set that to the side. Um, this is your reservoir holder. I have already taken the screws out of the bottom of it. There's just two screws that go through the bottom of the chassis, uh, three millimeter Allen wrench. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, on here you can see the magnetic sensor for the reservoir. Uh, if you look back here, it's got the two con connections right there. And this is the reservoir socket. This is easy to remove, just unscrew while holding at the bottom. I'm gonna do this just to get this out of the way so you can see inside a little bit better. And that comes right off like that. And you can disconnect the wires, take this all the way off if you want, or just sit to the side. Now you have real good access to everything inside here. I'll put this nut back here so I don't lose it. All right, so this is the socket, uh, and that pin in there is what pushes on the ball bearing on the bottom of the reservoir and opens it up so the water can flow into the system. Mm -hmm. On here, you're gonna see two silicone tubes. This top one is a return line coming off of your OPV. We'll go over that in a moment. And the bottom one, this is where the water is coming into the pump. For the pump, you have your inline uh, particle filter. It's just got a little mesh screen right in the middle there. After the filter, you're gonna come into this little elbow on the pump. This is a vibratory pump. Uh, on the vibratory pump, you have your two wires for the power, and you also have this little limit here. Uh, if your unit starts to overheat for any reason, uh, that will go bad. Uh, it's gotta replace it, you would disconnect here and there and just replace that whole part of the system there. Okay, uh, off the pump, come over to this braided hose line and now we're into the big valve tree. So this is where everything kind of branches off and goes where it needs to go. So we're gonna start off going towards the service boiler side. So that would be on here. This solenoid, uh, that's the first step. This solenoid will open up when the boiler calls for water. It'll open up the solenoid and kick on the pump. Right past the solenoid valve is this non-return valve. Like a one-way valve there? Yep, so okay. the water can flow up into the boiler, but it can't make it back through it. It's just a little okay. extra added safety. You know, the solenoid should keep most of it from coming back, but better to be safe than sorry, right? And that solenoid valve, just for anybody who doesn't know, that's kind of like a magnetically operated valve. It charges up a coil in there to yep. open that. Exactly. That's exactly how it works. Uh, when that gets power to it, it uh, charges the coil, and there's a little piston inside the valve that runs through it, and it just pulls that op uh, forward mm -hmm. or up or whichever direction <laughs> this thing's facing. <laughs> it allows the water to run through the system. Okay. Okay. Uh, so up here goes through this. Uh, copper line and into the boiler itself. Is this, is this where we want to see inside the boiler? What's going on in there? Or? Uh, we can check that part. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a little difficult to kind of see how everything comes in on that side. Um, but I don't know if you can see through there. Yeah. But yeah, right there is where the water is going to be coming into the system. Uh huh. And the hole right next to it, that's where the water comes out for your hot water tap. Okay. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you can see the level probe in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that yeah. a metal stick? Is yeah. A white little top on it? There? Yep. That's, that's what is actually going to be sensing the water. So you know, use the example of yeah. over on here. Let's pretend this is the level probe. Mm -hmm. So what's happening is your water comes up and when it touches this rod, it completes a circuit between ground and the board. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's what tells the board that it has enough water into it. Um, okay, so okay. 
Back on this side, I'll show you a little bit more of what we got going on on the boiler itself. Uh, so this is your heating element. And this is your NTC temperature probe for the uh, PID. And that's what's actually telling you what the temperature is inside the system. Uh, you've got this capillary coming off right here. Travels all the way down mm -hmm. over to here. Uh -huh. And that shows you what the uh, pressure is inside the service boiler. There's a gauge on the face of the machine there. We're yep. See it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see. Where are we next? Uh, this covers about everything that's on the side of the boiler here. Um, so up here, okay. that's your level probe. Oh, it's a little loose. Eh, that. I can probably almost pull that one all the way out. So. If you ever do that to your machine, and you see that that pulls out really easily, yeah. you just tighten that nut right there. You don't okay. want to be able to really easily pull that up. So it's that's how you'll end up with a leak. So if you're ever trying to take that off and the whole thing pulls up, yep. just tighten just that tight, down a little tighten bit. Tighten that nut up a little bit, yep. make a better seal. Okay. There you go. Okay, and then right here we have our high limits. Mm -hmm. So you have your load and your neutral. These are resettable. There's a little button in the middle there. If they ever trip, you can just press down on that. You'll get a little click. Kind of like a little circuit breaker. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Right in the middle here, we got our safety valve. Uh, this one is rated for two bar. So if this were to start to overheat and the stats don't go first, this is your last line of defense. <laughs> That'll blow off and Steam will go everywhere. Release pressure out of there. Yep. Okay. It's, uh, you'll hear a big, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's, not, it's not an explosion. People, okay. people say it sounded like it blew up, but no, yeah, no, it doesn't yeah. really ever sound that bad. Okay. Uh, next to your safety valve, you have your vacuum relief valve here. Um, this is what closes during the heating of the machine. You'll hear it go off uh, when your machine's first starting to heat. You'll hear that little hissing sound and usually a little like a click. Uh, and that's the sound of that closing. this closing. If I can grab it, but yeah, you can see it there. Yeah. So that's, that's what making that little hissing and we'll, you'll see a little bit of steam come up, maybe a little bit of condensation on top of your cup tray, but that's that doing its job. So it's not an indication that there's anything wrong. Okay, that's, yeah. You're gonna hear that every indication. time you heat the machine up, right? Yeah, yep. you will. And it's an indication that everything is right in the world. Okay. Uh, okay, so now we'll move over to here. This line comes off and goes to your steam tap. Um, down over on this side here, mm -hmm. we have your static relay for the heating element. And mm -hmm. below that, got the brains of the operation. This is your control board. Okay. Okay. And just because they are relative to each other, we'll come over to this side. Mm -hmm. This is your PID. Uh, if you ever needed to take the PID off, it doesn't get removed from the inside of the machine. You actually can remove it without even taking the housing off. Just tilt this real quick so you can see. You got three millimeter there and there. You just loosen those up and the whole thing slides forward and you can pull it right out. You get the so. PID right out of there real easy. Yep, nice. so if you ever need to change it, you know, if it goes bad or anything like that, you just pull it right out that way. It's real nice. Very service friendly. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, right above the PID, got your connections for your uh, orange lamp. It's the water level indicator. Mm -hmm. uh, and then your main power switch right here. Mm -hmm. And your green lamp. Okay. Okay. Now, now, since this is a heat exchanger scene, we got the thing over here. Let's talk a little bit, you know, before you go on, I didn't mean to interrupt, but how that operates. What's happening really in that boiler? Okay, so. Since we got the cutaway, perfect. Yeah. So you'll see down here, uh, this mm -hmm. is where the water is getting introduced into the heat exchanger system. Mm -hmm. And you can see that right here as well. Mm -hmm. So let's get them a little bit closer to each yeah. other if so you care. Sure. Um, so the water comes in this way mm -hmm. 
up through there, and it's gonna go up into this tube right here. Now, this is a cutaway, so this is yep, <laughs> this is not normally open. Yeah. Uh, so what's happening is the water is coming into this system and getting heated up by the uh, the hot water and steam of the service boiler. Mm -hmm. So uh, everyone who remembers their high school uh, science classes, remember what uh, hot stuff does? It rises. It rises. So the hottest water is going to come right up through this tube, go through here into your group head. Mm -hmm. Now this is a flow control, but you know, just pretend that's not up there. It's no sure. different looking on the inside here. Mm -hmm. So your water is coming in, the hot water is coming in this way through these, there's little holes in the mushroom valve up here. Up in there. Yep. Uh, goes up through those holes and in through the top, there is a filter up there and a small jet that pushes the water down through the other side. Mm -hmm. So, the water is actually going to be recycled back through behind the mushroom valve here. Is there, so there's two holes here. There's the one there, there's mm -hmm. one there. Mm -hmm. So the hot, air, the hot water is coming in this way, and the colder water is being recycled back through the system, comes down through this tube to the through other through. side of the inlet fitting down here, and Which right is. back into the heat exchanger. Which on this, so you can get a little ID, that's that tube right there, right? That's, yes, yep, that tube right that's there. So that's the, the yep, that's the cold water return from the group head. Sure. Okay. So that water is constantly cycling through this system, and that's what keeps the temperature on the group head. Uh, it's the same way that it's going to work even on a multi-boiler system. Uh, but on obviously just the only real difference is that you're using passive heat of the service boiler to heat the water for the heat exchanger. Very cool stuff. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> Science! <laughs> yes. All right, so now that we know about that, this will all make a little bit more sense to you. Sure. Um, so we discussed everything going through the service boiler first. Uh, that was all going out that way. Now, say off the pump came this way. Mm -hmm. First thing we're going to run into is this T fitting right here going up to this capillary tube. This is going to the gauge on the front of the machine that displays your pump pressure. Mm -hmm. Okay, right past that is a non-return valve. So this is a good thing to keep in mind is that your uh, non-return valve, the placement of your non-return valve and your uh, gauge. Mm -hmm. So this is not going to read the pressure that is later on in the system. Mm -hmm. You know, on some machines the gauge is up higher in the system and it'll actually tell you the pressure inside the heat exchange system. Mm -hmm. uh, this is just going to tell you the what the pressure relative to the pump. And it's because of that non-return valve. The higher pressure that you're going to get later in the system from the higher heat mm -hmm. isn't going to be able to make it past here. Okay. So just something to keep in mind. Um, after the non-return valve, you got another T here. This is your overpressure valve. Uh, this is what regulates the pressure inside the system. It is also what you use to adjust the actual pressure that your pump is putting out. So the pressure is going to go pretty high if you didn't have one of these on here. It just kind of keeps pushing out more pressure. So this is what is going to tell it where it's got to stop. And that works by like dumping some pressure out of the system if when needed, right? Is yep, exactly. Yep, there's a uh, spring in there with a little uh, piston. So the more pressure it gets backed up upon it, it mm -hmm. reaches a certain point and it vents the extra pressure so that it can drop back down. And that ends up back in your reservoir. Yep, goes right back into your reservoir. So okay. not wasting any water. Yep. It's a nice thing you don't have to worry about overflowing <laughs> your uh, drip tray with uh, that on here. Okay. As long as you don't keep your uh, <laughs> group head open all day long. <laughs> yeah. So after the OPV, we're going to come through the tube and we wind up right back here into our heat exchange system. Which over here would be coming out of a little copper tube? Yep. Inside the heat exchange. Yep, yeah. it comes right up into there and then mixes in with everything in here. And then there's that little Teflon tube right there that's gonna go back up to go out and into the groove bed. Okay. Cool. Yeah. 
Cool. It's a pretty nifty system. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. The, uh, oh, I, I missed one part. One part. One part. Uh, brew pressure switch. Uh, uh, brew, brew switch? Brew switch, there we go, yeah. words, yes, <laughs> yes. It's not even a Monday, what's wrong with me? <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that's right there. Uh, we'll go over adjusting this in another video, but uh, that is the switch that is activated when you raise the lever mm -hmm. on your machine. And that's and that what that does is that activates the pump. Okay. That's all it activates. Cause that's all it needs to do. If it activated that, then you'd be filling your steam boiler. We don't want to do that. So. Okay. <laughs> Maybe just take a quick look at the front while we're here, just to see, you know, some of the components work. I'm gonna make you toss that around. I just make like making you move heavy things. That's okay. That's why I don't need to go to the gym. <laughs> yeah. You're keeping me fit. <laughs> All right. So on the front here, pardon my dust. Uh, we've got the PID right in the front here. Mm -hmm. uh, this is your data tag. Tells you what the machine is and a serial number and all that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, you've got both your taps, steam, hot water. This is a stock group head, does not have the uh, flow control device, though it is possible to put it on the Pro 500. Mm -hmm. uh, this gauge over here is your brew pressure gauge. So again, we're showing what the pressure is inside the heat exchange, through the heat exchanger. Um, and then over here is the gauge for your service boiler pressure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And, and it's got yeah. the nice sprung valves, right? And yep, yep, nice sprung valves on there. We'll show you through those uh, in a, another, another segment another, here. Another, yeah. Show you how to rebuild those. But yeah, there you go. I think that's about all there is. Like I said, it's a pretty <laughs> basic system. So, all right, keep it simple, right? All right, Brian. Thanks for taking us through the uh, interior of the Pro 500 PID. Not a problem.